So now let's take a look at the classified balance sheet. Remember, the classified balance sheet is one of four financial statements that we must create under generally accepted accounting principles when we're providing financial information to stakeholders. The classified balance sheet is a snapshot of the financial condition of the company at a specific point in time. That point in time needs to coincide with the ending date of the income statement and the statement of retained earnings. One of the key parts of the classified balance sheet is that we try to provide standard classifications for assets, liabilities, and stockholders' equity. While it's important to understand that assets are resources and liabilities are obligations of the company and stockholders' equity are the investments of the owners, we also want to know when are we going to utilize our resources and when are we going to satisfy the obligations that we have to the people outside of the company. Take a look at the standard classifications that are listed on this slide. You'll see in under the assets column, current assets, long-term investments, property, plant, and equipment, and intangible assets. Current assets are the assets that will be utilized or be converted to cash within a year or an operating cycle, whichever is longer. If an asset is not current, it must be long-term. Therefore, long-term means that an asset will be used or converted to cash in greater than a year or an operating cycle. On the other column of liabilities and stockholders equity, we also show current versus long term. Current liabilities are obligations of the company that must be satisfied in less than a year or an operating cycle. Long term liabilities and stockholders equity are obligations and investments of the stockholders that are expected to be within the company and will not be satisfied until a year or greater. Let's take a look at an example of a classified balance sheet. Notice in this example of a classified balance sheet we use the titles for Franklin Corporation across the top. It's very important that we provide those titles because we want to make sure that the reader knows what information we're trying to portray. In red, we have the overall titles of current assets, long-term investments, property, plant, and equipment, and intangible assets. Notice that as we provide additional detail for each category, we indent the description to the right. As we take a look at the numbers, the totals for each of the categories are on the far right-hand column, and we use dollar signs to denote that we're doing this in U.S. dollars. As we're providing detail for how each number was calculated, we indent to the left, and those numbers on the left correspond to the detailed descriptions as we had in text on the left. Here is the liabilities and stockholders equity section of the balance sheet. Notice we use the same formatting as the asset side. Also, take a look at the total liabilities and stockholders' equity total of $61,400. This total is the same total as over here on the total asset side. Notice at the bottom, the total assets equal $61,400. So, the accounting equation of assets equal liabilities plus stockholders' equity is in balance. So here is a description of current assets. As we mentioned before, current assets are assets that a company expects to convert to cash or use up within one year or an operating cycle, whichever is longer. Remember, different companies may use a different operating cycle other than a year as long as they're consistently applied. Companies will have different types of current assets on their balance sheet. However, the most common types that you should see are cash, investments, receivables, inventories, and prepaid expenses. We will go into each of these different types of current assets in other chapters. Here is an example of an actual 
balance sheet for Southwest Airlines. We are just showing you the current asset portion and note that the most current asset or the most liquid asset is cash and its cash equivalents. As you go down the list, they are less liquid. Long-term investments are investments made by the company into other companies as an investment. Now, normally when you hear the term long-term, means the intention of the company is to hold that investment for greater than a year or an operating cycle. Property, plant, and equipment are the pieces of equipment that are being used by the company for its day-to-day -day operations. Typically, these pieces of equipment will last longer than a year and they are used in the operations. If they're not being used in the operations, they will not be classified property, plant, and equipment. Included in this area are things like land, building, equipment, vehicles, and furniture. One unique part of property, plant, and equipment is that we record the acquisition of these assets at cost and we leave those values at cost even though we're using up the asset. As we use up the asset, we allocate the cost of the asset using what we call depreciation. We depreciate an asset over the useful life of the asset and we accumulate that depreciation in an account called accumulated depreciation. So if I take the cost and I subtract out the accumulated depreciation, I will get the net book value of the asset. Here is an example of property, plant, and equipment for Cooper Tire and Rubber Company. Notice what we have on land, buildings, machinery, mold, cores, and rings are the cost of the acquisition of those various assets. Then we subtract out the accumulated depreciation in order to get the net book value of the, those assets. The last long-term asset that we normally see on a classified balance sheet are intangible assets. As noted on this slide, assets that have no physical substance are normally called intangible assets. They can include goodwill, patents, copyrights, trademarks, or trade names, and other items that would fit into this category. We will talk about intangible assets in another chapter, so just keep in mind that these are considered long term. Current liabilities are obligations of the company that we intend to satisfy or pay within the next year or operating cycle. Examples of current liabilities are accounts payable and salaries, notes, interest, income taxes, pretty much anything that where you see the word payable is a liability. We also will include the current portion of long-term obligations. For instance, if you were to go out and buy a car and you went to get a car loan, you would be expected to be making monthly payments on that car loan. Well, the payments for month 1 through 12 are considered current, whereas periods 13 and thereafter would be considered long term. So keep that in mind is that even though you have a long term loan, there may be portions of it that may be current. Here's an example of the current portion of a classified balance sheet from Marcus Corporation. Notice here we show the current liabilities in the order of liquidation. In other words, the ones you expect to pay off first. Long-term liabilities are obligations to the company that are going to be greater than a year. Those include bonds, mortgages, long-term notes payables, leases, and pensions. 
Remember, if any part of that is to be expected to be paid in the current year, those will be considered current. The final section of the classified balance sheet is the stockholders equity section. Typically in stockholders equity, you will see common stock and retain earnings. Common stock is the actual amount invested or paid into the company in exchange for the stock of the company. As we mentioned before, retained earnings are the profits of the company that have been kept in the company for future use that have not been returned to the stockholders in the form of dividends. 